Alright, and we're back. Welcome back to Command Keen, Invasion of the Vorticons, Marooned on Mars. We're about to take the teleporter to the dark side of Mars. Ain't that a good sound effect? I love it. But I'll stop inflicting it on you now. Okay, so this is the Ice City, and this is one of the biggest levels in the game, and it's uh, where we're going to find our next spaceship part. So, uh, as you can see, there's a tank there, nicely discouraging us from going and getting that pizza. Pretty much a lot of the stuff in this game, with regards to um, your points, it's all risk and reward. Usually, if you are willing to take the risk, there is big reward for you, but, you know, it's up to you as to whether or not you think that risk is worth taking. This level is huge, maze-like, and um, quite challenging. I mean, it's not... That's the extra life sound effect, for those of you who are wondering. And that's a butler robot. Um, yeah. Again, like I said about the Emerald City, a lot of the levels in this game can be breezed through if you want to. But um, the more risks you're willing to take, the more places you're willing to look, uh, the more stuff you'll find and the more points you'll finish with. If that matters to you, then cool. Now, for example, I've just reached a point where I could finish the level quite quickly. But I'm not going to do that. Not right away, because I want to play with the ice machines. This is the one place where the tank is useful because he melts you out of the ice blocks. Again, this is a massive risk and reward thing, because you can use those ice blocks to freeze yourself and get flung to higher places. But I'm not going to do that right now, because I'm frankly going crazy with that noise. Right. Okay, well this time I'll show you a different bit of the level, just for the sake of uh, something different. A little snow yorp. There's not a lot of background detail in this game, a lot of it's just plain grey. But um, occasionally you'll see something that's cute, like the mountains or the snow yorp there. Um, there's bits of intricacy in the level design, for example that bridge there you will just be able to see has a crack in it, which essentially makes that pizza pretty much ungettable because you will fall through it. That ice is designed to fling you into the water, and that noise of the ice generator is designed to drive you crazy. Oops. It should be noted that the way you shoot in this game is by pressing Control and Alt at the same time. Control is your jump button, Alt is your pogo button, so it's very easy to accidentally shoot when you mean to jump or pogo, or jump out of a pogo. It's also very easy to accidentally jump when you want to shoot something. Now, this is difficult. Those tanks will kill you. So, let's do it the other way show you how you are meant to get to that. Well, I mean, it's possible. You can do it that way. You can get it. But it's challenging and a big waste of your time, frankly. And so I thought I'd just take you back to the start of this level and show you how I'm going to do it the other way. I've got to say, I have not died so many times on this level in years. Some of the shrines on this side of the map give me problems usually, but um, usually I can walk through this one, so I'm having a really off day today. You'll notice that one of the things we haven't gotten any of in this level is um, ammo. There are no ray guns thus far. I think there is one if you can use the ice throwing machine. Let's climb up these barrels, which you can jump up through but not down through again. And... There you go. The uh, tanks can't shoot onto that platform because they can't shoot higher than their bodies. Now, the Vorticon in this level is tricky. You can sort of dodge it, but it's really hard. In the end, you are likely going to have to shoot it. And I can't see it at the moment. It's very tight quarters. And we got him! 
you can use that pyramid of blue blocks to jump and dodge him by getting over him or getting him under you. But um, we'll just do it that way for now. Let's go to the first ice shrine. Uh, this is a fun little level, if I remember correctly. I haven't played this game in quite a while. I practiced a little before I started doing this, but um, I only practiced up to the end of the first half, so this second half could be a little shaky. Time was I could knock this game over pretty quickly, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, got him. Um, I just wanted to, uh, while I'm doing this part, pl talk a little bit about Play It Loud, because I'm not sure um, how many of you have seen Play It Loud. Uh, I've done a couple of review. I did a review. I did a video with a friend of mine called Emmy. We were trying something out and introducing her to games from before she was born, and we did Gauntlet. Um, but what Play It Loud is about, uh, as I discuss on my blog, my Play It Loud blog, is about trying to remember that games are meant to be fun. Ah! And, you know, I'm, I'm, I might be sounding frustrated, but trust me, I'm having fun. My issue with gaming and why I'm, why I'm very strongly a retro gamer... Ah! Okay, that was kind of inevitable. Why I'm very strongly a retro gamer is because I, I remember games as being promoted as being fun and enjoyable. I'm When I'm playing a game, I always want to be having fun. And I think games... There is a current trend in games to just take themselves so seriously. Oh my god, this jump. There is this current trend in games to take themselves so seriously. And I, I really reject that. I, I want games to be fun. I want when I'm playing a game to be like enraptured in the game and not thinking about cover based mechanics and all that kind of thing. So, you know, that's why I love games like this. It's simple, but it's so enjoyable. And um, despite my increased blood pressure from that stupid jumping puzzle and these ice mechanics. Let's get down here and open the yellow door. Hallelujah. Here's another one of the Emmanuel Kant books. So yeah, um, what I'm hoping to do with this YouTube channel is extend the Play It Loud philosophy and just have some fun with some games and play some fun games and um, play some games from my childhood and play some new, uh, play some old games that I've only discovered more recently. You see these words in your head. You will need a ray gun in the end, but not to shoot the Vorticon. Wise advice, and we will see what it means later. So yeah, we'll be playing some fun games on this channel. I'll be trying to introduce you to some games from my childhood. I'll be introducing myself to games. I, it's worth noting I didn't grow up with a console. I only ever grew up with PC. Um, so I'll be trying out new games, and I'll hopefully be showing off some games that you guys will remember with fondness. But what I always want this channel to be about is having some fun with video games. So, uh, yeah. Fingers crossed. Go a bit into the story of this game. Um, so the Invasion of the Vorticons trilogy, as it was known, is a series of three games. This game and its sequels, The Earth Explodes and Keen Must Die. This game is about Keen was simply on his little... He, just built his spaceship so he thought he'd take it to Mars, because why not? It's close by. And apparently has an oxygen breathable atmosphere. Um, so Keen, having taken his spaceship to Mars, yeah baby, comes back after exploring and discovers that the Vorticons have torn it apart. Who are the Vorticons? Well, they're guys who look kind of like blue wolves. They live on Vorticon 6. Okay, this jump is either I'm either going to make this on my first go or we're going to be doing this about 10 times. Just nine more times! Um, geez, I've only got two lives. <laughs> this is an appalling playthrough. Um, what was I saying? Yes, Vorticon 6. They live on Vorticon 6. They're here on Mars. They've got an outpost on Mars and they are trying to stop Commander Keen. Although at this point he doesn't quite know why. He's just... As far as he knew, he was just having a look around Mars. And he comes back and they've stolen all the bits of his ship. So he's out looking for answers. And he's letting his gun do the talking. 
Actually, I very rarely shoot the Vorticons in this game, I've got to say. No. Ah! I'm giving this one more go. <laughs> I really want to get this. <laughs> I could skip this level. It's completely unessential. You do not need to finish this level. You do not need anything. There's like not like there's items in it that you want. All I'm doing is building up points and doing a 100% completion run. But I have done the... I know how to do this. And it's so just... I, I, this will not beat me. It may beat me. We'll see. I'm going to try this one more time. This is probably, in my opinion, one of the trickiest jumps in the game. It is just... There we go. Now watch, I'll find some stupid other way to die. One of the worth, things worth noting is that nothing can pretty much attack you over a platform. So you can usually quite safely stand on a platform. The only thing that's likely to happen to you is Yorp might jump into you, but everything else is pretty much stuck on this plane they start on. What's this one I have to say? A voice buzzes in your mind, there is a hidden city. Look in the dark area of the city to the south. We will be coming to that shortly. Alright, so that's another shrine done. I am going to save because I am running very low on lives. And the next shrine! Taking no chances. Um, this shrine is... oh god, more fire jumps. No! Rats. No keens left! If we can get to the secret city, I can stock back up on lives, but it may be getting to the secret city that proves to be the challenge! Okay, that was totally not my fault. I got first place, and I spelt my name wrong. Okay, let's um, try that again. I've got to tell you, I cannot remember the last time I got a game over in Commander Keen. Well, not in this one, anyway. In other Commander Keen games, I get game overs all the time. But, um, not in the first one. <laughs> Alright. Now we're getting... Feeling a bit more confident. Get the teddy bear. The teddy bears are worth 5,000 points. If you get four of them, you get an extra life. They are the most valuable item in the game. Ah, oh, it's the Garg Shrine! I always forget which one this is, but it's my favourite. Because that's cause usually the Yorps, who are like, you know, one-eyed and dopey, will give you such sage advice. And the Garg says, Garg! That's it. That's all he says. <laughs> anyway, someone at id Software had a sense of humour. It's worth noting that this game was never very serious. Let's um try another shrine. Uh, save. I am saving... Copiously, because <laughs> I'm not going to game over myself out of this. This game, this level introduces you to not really their blocks. You can, um, if you look very closely at them, they're quite obviously different. But if you want to get all the points in here, you can, um, which I might because I could use the lives. Uh, you can um, go up here and go out through those blocks rather than having to try and force your way through the butler bots. The butler robots are so annoying. This this entire level is just stuff designed to irritate you. Uh, and, um, like that. I'm convinced that the sound effects are part of the conspiracy. They want to irritate you with these sound effects. Hopefully me talking all over it um, eases that for you. And, of course, there's some stuff that tries to kill you, like that garg. Those Yorps are, of course, designed to push you into the Garg, but pretty much you're unlikely to do so because anyone with a shred of sense will have killed the Garg. And again, we've got a fire pit that you don't actually need to jump over because you can, if you've got the pogo stick, just go up here. Apparently people play this game and didn't get the pogo stick. I have no idea how or why you would do that. A Yorpish Whisper says, look for dark hidden bricks. You can see naught but their upper left corner. I actually used some of those in the Pogo Shrine level when I jumped up into the ceiling. 
but um, yeah, there you go. Alright, so that's all the shrines. We're done with the shrines. Now this level is another one of my favourites. Um, but... Yes. Uh, we are going to break here for a minute because, and I'll come back in the next part, because the next part will probably be the last part uh, for the last few levels, and because I suspect that this level will take quite some time. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, play it loud, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll see you next time.